Hello and welcome to Ninja Man's Fine Disaster. This is Battlefield 4 and in today's weapon review we're going to be taking a closer look at the AR-160 assault rifle. We're going to be taking a closer look at its strength, its weaknesses, the best playstyle to be using it and why I would definitely recommend anybody who isn't already very familiar with this weapon to give it a decent try in Battlefield 4. Before we get started with the stats and the weapon review of the AR-160, I wanted to give a quick shout out to Renegade Cooler for suggesting this video, this weapon review, and also a quick shout out to all you guys out there who were willing to give me an opinion on whether or not you wanted to see just Battlefield 1 content or a little bit of Battlefield 4 content mixed in between. Of course, as I promised, I am going to be listening to that content, and as per se, you will occasionally be finding a Battlefield 4 video on my channel. I'm thinking of doing pretty much one every week in conjunction with two Battlefield 1 videos, if I can manage that rate of video production. Production. We'll just have to see, but for now, at least you're going to be getting an irregular amount of Battlefield 4 content on this channel besides just the standard Battlefield 1. With that being said, though, let's start off with the weapon review itself. Starting off then with the stats of the AR-160, we have a maximum damage of 24.5 here and a minimum damage of 18. Standard assault rifle damage model for Battlefield 4, a relatively modest fire rate at 700 rounds per minute, and a standard magazine size at 30 plus 1, that's 30 bullets plus 1 in the chamber. Reload times are relatively good with a short reload at 2 seconds, this is definitely quick enough for all situations you will be needing it, and a slightly longer more painful reload at 3 seconds, definitely going to try and avoid that in close quarters if you possibly can. Moving on then to recoil which makes the AR-160 a little bit of a special gun in itself, with 0.2 degrees upwards that is vertical to the left and the right that is horizontal you have the perfectly balanced recall on the AR-160 more importantly than it being perfectly balanced however it is very very controllable this is a very low amount of recall especially considering that you're getting a 700 round per minute fire rate with this gun many would consider 700 rounds per minute enough to compete in medium to close quarter combat if you can hit your shots and with the recoil amount that you've got on this assault rifle and the given accuracy of it you're looking at a gun that starts to perform well at any range you can aim at. Moving on then to the first shot, multiplier at 1.6, ideal for tap firing. This is relatively low, not non-existent, but given that we have a low recoil to begin with, the first shot multiplier is not going to be felt too hefty, and you should be able to tap fire this gun very well at longer ranges as well. The accuracy of this gun is standard for an assault rifle, that is to say we have an 0.2 ADS value while standing and not moving, and hip fire, that is hip firing while moving at 3.5. Hip fire, sufficient for close quarters, nothing but it and the accuracy of this gun of course is sufficient for pretty much anything you're going to be using it for. Moving on then to the attachments for the AR-160. In Battlefield 4 we still have a working proper attachment system unlike our new Battlefield so this section of the video is actually interesting. Starting off then with the standard of course I'm going to be recommending a red dot sight on here however if you're somebody who likes to use higher magnification optics on your assault rifles the AR-160 is one that works very well with them. This is of course down to its low recoil meaning you're going to be able to keep your targets very much easily accessible in your sights at all distance firing so if you want to go for something like a pka 3.4 times or a jgm four times multiplier feel free to do so on the ar160 this gun will work just fine with them accessory for me is going to be a laser sight we've had this debate many a time some people prefer them because they can switch them off and they know when to do so other people find it difficult and get themselves spot or shot through smoke many often times when using it feel free to adapt this to your liking playstyle and capability Barrel attachment options are as flexible and versatile as a gun in itself. You can use whatever you truly want with the AR-160. However, obviously there are going to be things that I will recommend and other things that I think are just useless. Suppressor, if you're going for close quarter flanks, this is of course a given. However, in my opinion, truly the best attachment for the AR-160 for the players who are a bit more experienced and don't have any trouble controlling recoil at longer ranges would be a heavy barrel. Now this will move up the recoil a little bit to the area where you're slowly starting to compete with an M416 on a recoil perspective, but you will have accuracy above any other assault rifle in the game, that is to say, without using the heavy barrel themselves. So you have then a weapon which is highly accurate with still moderate amounts of recoil. And this can be useful if you're trying to extend the AR-160's range to those extreme ranges where it's not necessarily the recoil of the gun getting in the way of you shooting your targets, but more likely the base accuracy of the gun. Furthermore, I just like running with a heavy barrel if the gun suits well for enough for it, because it gives 
gives me a feeling of higher precision in all scenarios. Under barrel attachment for me is obvious on this one given that we don't have a big amount of first shot recoil multiplier it's going to be a vertical grip allows me to strafe a bit more allows me to get more reliable hip, hip fire it just makes the gun more versatile and more suitable for running gun combat. Then we have the attachments covered for the AR-160. What's the verdict? Now, in case you haven't been able to tell yet, I love the AR-160 very much. I've got quite a few kills with this gun, and when I'm looking for something a little bit different to the good old Ace-23 M416 or L85 AUG-A3 runaround, then this is the gun I'd go to. It's also the gun I'd use for most game modes where I find myself engaging quite a bit of long-distance combat, but I'm willing to dedicate myself to exclusively use a gun suited for those ranges. A great example to illustrate this is a game of Conquest or rush based on longer range engagements between the objectives but the actual objectives or capture points and comp placements themselves are usually in close quarter areas where something like a FAMAS or AEK will dominate and something like a DMR is less suited. This is where something like an AR-160 can be great because it allows you to move up on the point with the precision to take out targets at longer ranges defending it and once you're on the point you're not completely useless with your 700 rounds per minute you can do effective damage if you've got the superior accuracy or drop on your enemy. Therefore, the AR-160 is probably one of the most, if not the most, flexible assault rifle in the game, and at the same time, one of the most accurate ones and easy to use, thanks to its low recoil and thus easy appliance of the heavy barrel. I definitely give it a try. However, if you're expecting a challenge, the AR-160 is probably not the best gun to use out there. It is an easy to use gun, and as such, is ideal for people not so familiar with game mechanics in Battlefield 4 or who have difficulties controlling recoil. Nevertheless, it can be quite a fun change from time to time to switch over to something that isn't too demanding if you're looking for an easy stroll through some of the enemy squads. With that though, this concludes my opinion on the AR-160 and my review. I'd like to know your thoughts, your experiences with this gun down below in the comments, as of course your future video suggestions both for Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1. As usual, I'll be looking to read those in the comments down below. But with that being said, at this point, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next Battlefield 4 video.